afternoon and you're welcome to the office right here at Kokomlini 355 Fanofa Street. My name is Yaya Kofi and today we're here once again to have tete -a -tete or chit chat about um, something that has to do with our office and today I have with me um, Mr. Raymond Labi. We are discussing the role of the human resource manager in our organizations. Hi, good afternoon. Good afternoon. You're welcome to my office. Thank the you very office. much. Are you okay? Are you happy to be with me? More than? Oh, okay. He is more than. Wherever you're watching us from, please join in, send in your contributions, and I will be right here to read all of them. Really, we really want to find out what um, the role of the HR is in our organizations. Uh, thank you very much. People. Mm -hmm is one of the key resources okay. of any enterprise. All right. So our role as human resource managers is to put in systems that will enable the business to effectively manage this resource okay. to be able to achieve the target of the business. Okay, so talking about resource, meaning the human resource. Yeah. Um, how, how, how many people do you need um, to be able to employ the services of an HR? Uh, if you could. I'm asking that, yes, human resource, there are enterprises, there are organizations, but in an organization or an SME, really how, how many people, as in the number of people, do you need okay. to have that um, person? Okay, so there, there are certain standards, you know, Okay. That will say probably if you have <coughs> about 50 or 100 uh, employees, okay. it will be good to have at least one or two uh, human resource people to, to manage. Okay. Basically, the human resource people are not directly managing the people. What they are doing is that they are providing the environment. They are providing the direction. They are providing the guidance so that the people will be managed effectively. Okay. Let's say you've brought in a presenter. Mm -hmm. The presenter is to achieve a certain goal. Exactly. Okay, we need first to understand the skill set of that presenter okay. and what else we need to do to enable that presenter perform optimally. Okay. So the role of the HR person is to do what we call an assessment of the skill set of the person. So together with the line manager, we can have a discussion with the presenter, get to know the areas he or she lacks. Mm -hmm. And then we'll say that based on what we have found out, let's put in A, B, C training plan okay. to, to address the gaps. Okay, so basically that is what we'll do. We are like advisors and we are like directors. We are like consultants. Okay, so playing the role or the managing between the employee and the employer. Yeah. In that regard, I would really want to find out if um, there is an issue between the employee and the employer. Where does the HR stand? Uh, we are about the truth. Okay. We are about facts. Mm -hmm. So when where, where there's an incident, let's say a reporter has published uh, a news item mm. and the feedback from those who have read the story is that the uh, reporter put in certain things which are not facts. Mm. Okay, there will be a complaint from the line manager with respect to that particular staff. What we will do is that we'll go in, look at the facts and then based on the facts we'll take a decision. So it will not be for the employee will not be for the employer, it will be for the truth. So as HR people, we look at what has occurred and we use it to make a determination. Talking of this, there was an issue recently about uh, an employee being molested by her employer and mm -hmm. it went viral, mm -hmm. but we never heard of anyone from that institution coming up to really talk about it or speak for that employee. So we want to really, really find out the real role that um, um, HR plays in the life of the employee. Uh, the HR is just the whip that is being used to um, chastise the employee or they are the mouthpiece 
to or for the employer and um, the employees I, I like to leave with these two words mm -hmm. firm and fair okay firm and fair and in my role as, as HR if, if the overall boss in the company tells mm -hmm. me to dismiss you okay I'll ask questions okay what has happened what has she done mm -hmm. Once I receive that set of information, mm -hmm. I'll come to you to give you a fair hearing. I was told you've not been at work for 10 days. Okay. What is captured in our, in our HR policy? Maybe it's say five working days, mm -hmm. you, you vacated post. Mm -hmm. So I'll give you a fair hearing, take you through the process. And when I make a determination that you have done something wrong against the set of rules that we've all agreed to abide by, okay. then I'll ask myself, that same book, does it say I should suspend you or does it say we should dismiss you? Then based on that, we'll, take a uh, we'll make a determination and then we'll sign it off. Okay, talk of sack, suspend and everything. Should I come to the HR and say, okay, I'm being harassed by a manager, being mm -hmm. a female, I mean, I'm being harassed, and I come to tell you the HR, would you go to my manager to tell him or go by the firm and fair position that you you'd always would want to take and then make a determination by that? Uh, sexual harassment is a very serious crime. Sure. When you go to the Labor Act mm -hmm. at 651 Ghana, it's a very serious crime. Mm -hmm. So as HR person, I take it seriously. Once you come to me and you want to discuss this issue with me, I'll give you maximum attention. Mm. And I must assure you that once we find the facts as you have stated, we'll protect you. Because that is the first thing for me. We need to protect your Hold interest. on. Let me invite others who are watching it wherever across the world. This is a topic I know is on your heart, my heart as well. Bring in your questions to the office and I'll read it. I'm sure he has answers to them. So just... Just don't watch. I see a lot of people online. Just don't watch, but come in. And I have a lot of my colleagues here who may want to have a um, few questions for him. So please, um, get interactive, get into the groove. Yashon, do you have any question for him? <laughs> well, he says he's actually working on it. Um, Selwyn, any question for him? You have a very, oh, um, anybody with a question from Flo? Oh, hi, that's Benedict. Do you have any question for the HR? What's money? <laughs> you know, is, is, is it always all, only about money and recruitment? No, no. But uh, it's only about uh, human resources, about recruitment, mm -hmm. for sure. Yeah. It's about training and development. Yes. It's about performance management. Mm -hmm. It's about rewards. Okay, rewards. It's about rewards and motivation. All right. It's our employee relations. You know, how we make the employee very comfortable within the work environment. Mm -hmm. So money is part, but it's not, it's not a key part. You know, all the parts that constitute the key areas of HR are, are very much important. You made mention of training your personnel. Yeah. Um, is it a requ requirement or is it, um, should I say, is that an honor on the employee to demand to be trained or you make available? Uh, you, you can pick it from two sides. Okay. Uh, as an employee, you owe it to yourself mm -hmm. to train yourself at the least opportunity you get. Now we have a lot of means online. Mm -hmm. Okay. You can read anything about photography online. And I challenge employees to do that on a regular basis. As an employer, it's also part of our obligation mm -hmm. to the employee to every time upgrade the skills. Okay. You know, journalism, when mm -hmm. it started, there was something like social media. Sure. Now it's an essential skill for each journalist. Okay. So what, what should we do? We need to invest in that area mm -hmm. to make sure that the people have the skills to, to develop that aspect of, of their competency. Okay. So for me, uh, it is the responsibility of the employer as well as the employee. Okay. All right. Oh, someone has a question. Please, the microphone is over there. Pass the microphone. Your okay. name? Extra things. Okay, go ahead. My question is, what salary did this? Who handles it? Right. It's a, it's a beautiful question. Great. 
and, and it's, it's at the heart of every employee, I must say. Um, let's get it straight today mm -hmm. that your number one human resource person is your line manager. Your line manager. Your number one human resource person is, is your, your line, line manager. manager. And I guess I have to go. I, I have to be uh, prompting my boss all the time. Yes. He is the number one. Okay. And Raymond in the human resource department, I am the consultant. I'm the advisor to your line manager. So where he has difficulty in appreciating your circumstances, mm -hmm. then he comes to me, Raymond, we have the situation where maybe salary has delayed. Mm -hmm. How do I communicate it to, to my the people. employee so as not to demotivate them, mm -hmm. but it can energize them to still continue to perform? Then we'll share thoughts, I'll draw my experience, and we'll carry it through. So your number one... HR is your line manager. Well, I guess then you're learning. I'll come in at the office level. Okay, so I guess you're learning. There's something that has been um, pricking my mind. I want to find out is the HR a staff or management? I mean, manager. Um, uh, the, uh, those who have uh, done a lot of schooling, mm -hmm. they'll say that HR is a management function. Okay. So it's important that. In every institution, you have somebody who sits at the highest level. Okay. So in most companies, you have the chief human resource officer. Okay. He sits with management because mm -hmm. people issues are key. And you don't want management to sit. You have finance, uh, chief finance officer there. You have other, maybe marketing manager there. And then you have nobody representing the people. The people. So in every institution, you should have somebody who sits at the highest level. Below that will be other levels of management who uh, together make up the human resource uh, department. So we have the overall, but then there are levels when it comes to human resource management. So in this regard, how should an HR conduct his or herself so as to be accessible to the people? Because there are some uh, people, I mean some HR that it's so difficult for you to come close to. Talk less of sharing because you, you have that instance where you share something with the HR in the next minute. It's, I'm not sure he's ready to keep it share with others. So how should an HR conduct himself or herself? You know, there are things we call competences mm -hmm. for every role. Uh, let's say cashier. Okay. One key competence you need is what we call attention to detail, so that he will not put people's money in your account, attention to detail. Mm -hmm. So at the HR level too, there are certain competencies if you don't have, you cannot be a HR person. Okay. Like communication skill. Wow. You know, you come and I'm talking to you, you feel that warmth in my, in my interaction with you. You should be very ethical. Okay. Because the kind of information that will come to you, you want to hold that information and use it for the good of the person who has shared it. So ethical, and then in terms of communication, you, and then your critical thinking itself. Okay. You know, you should not behave like a, a, a crybaby. Okay. You know, when, when there's crisis, how do you come out of the box, how to manage it? Are all competencies HR people should have? Okay. So ethically, when you come and discuss any issue with me, the question is, who am I sharing with? Mm -hmm. The person I'm sharing with should be able to resolve the issue for you, else you won't get to know. Okay, somebody is saying that, this from Salome, is actually saying that it looks like HR always and mostly would side with the senior management instead of the employees. How true is that? Uh, it happens. Mm -hmm. it, it means that that HR is not fair, okay. it's not worth its salt, it's not also fair in it daily. But when you meet people like us, we speak truth to power. Mm -hmm. If my overall my chief HR, he says, Raymond, this is the way to go. I say, no, we have a, the labor act there. Let me quote for you. It says this. It is not rash. Okay. Black and white, case is done. So if you have knowledge, if you are worth your salt, you will speak truth to power. The fear is that you might lose your job. But I will value what I call uh, being truthful, than having a job and cotoing to what is not good. It will catch up with you one day. 
All right. So should I have an HR who doesn't have all the qualities that you have mentioned? Oh, he should and be kicked out. No, like I have a case I need to report or I need to tell him something. Who do I walk to if I don't trust my HR, if I feel that my HR is not trustworthy to share with? Because I know he won't even work on it. Well, that I'm saying that that should not even happen in the first place. Because we need to deal with the issue permanently. Mm -hmm. If we try and create a detour, it will come back to us. So for me, if, the, if you don't trust the HR, then we must take steps to let the person step aside. He's not cut for that job. Like a cameraman who is taking shots above your head. You know, he's not cut for the job. You should just call it quit and get a person. Because it's a critical area. We have machines. Okay. But look, it is the people who are managing these machines. Mm -hmm. And the optimum delivery is based on the competencies of these people. Mm -hmm. Sometimes the machine will go haywire, but try, try the skill of these people. Okay. So human resources is key. And the people who, are, who play that role. And you know, we had a time when marketing was a craze. Mm -hmm. So they say, I'm going to university marketing. It got to a time to people say, HR is the what? Then almost everybody got into it. Okay. But with time, they will get out. <laughs> okay, I think I, I have one of my colleagues. Um, Meslin, right? Yeah, Meslin. Your question. Um, please, do interns deserve allowance? Sorry? Interns. Interns? Yes, yeah, do they okay. deserve allowance? Okay. Let, let, well, let me... I think that's, that's one thing that most people would be asking because we have a lot of people who are working... Um, in other, in some organisations, as interns that are not receiving pay, so I think it's a very um, laudable question. And and, and it's, it's it's a beautiful question. Okay. And let, let me give you the truthful answer. Okay. Uh, in in Ghana, there is no clear law on that, mm -hmm. but my reading uh, outside of Ghana tells me that if if an intern is to be paid, there are certain yardsticks that must be met. Mm -hmm. One of them is if the intern is not learning, okay, we have interns who have come and virtually they will disrupt your work. Okay. Instead of doing this work for 30 minutes, you use two hours because you have to teach them. So that person will not be paid. Mm -hmm. But you have interns who virtually, within three minutes of doing this, they are actually performing even above what you as staff will do. Under this condition, that intern in American law is qualified to be paid an allowance. So should you find an intern in an organization for more than two years who is not being paid? What do you do? Oh, this, this should not okay. This, this should not okay. Because it means that certain systems are not functioning well. Okay. Because normally you give an intern three months as a learning process. Okay. After that, the intern must step and move back to school. Mm -hmm. uh, but I know of the situations where they finish school and they hang around. Those things are not ethical. Those things are not ethical. And so should there be one in any organization? What's your advice to them? My advice is the human resource person should take immediate step to audit the system, flash out all those interns. When I say flash out, it flash out those interns and then restore ethical standards okay because for me it's key i don't want to abuse the right of any any person mm -hmm. so once we flash out then we see reality okay that okay there are gaps in these areas then what do we do we take steps to address them because sometimes too the everyday staff also will take advantage of these intents and then they become uh Udbaros, okay and then they let people you know Run, run the game for them. Okay, so I think Kobe has a question for you. Kobe, go ahead. Yeah, Kobe. Coming, coming. <laughs> so um, my my question is really quite long. So imagine that I've joined a company. I've been without job for about two years, and then I get a job. We've negotiated salaries and everything, and I'm coming. But I get to a point I don't have money to come. Charlie, zero CDs in my account, and you haven't paid me yet. Is there a way I can come to the HR and say, you know, I do, I've been taking, you've given me a job, but I don't have money. Can you, like, give me an IOU so when I get paid, you will deduct from it or something like that? Is the, HR, is it the HR's responsibility to do something like that? Advanced salary payment. Yes, 
some advance or payments. you make me stay at home and wait when you're ready to pay me and start a job yeah yeah we in most companies you have what they call iou okay where you take maybe one week advance as you anticipate your your next salary so your first point of call is your line manager okay who has given you the audacity to sit where you sit and the kind of work you do you go elvis your man is broke i don't see the way for the next three days get 20 ghana come to work he has solved your problem or it's a bigger problem let me have a discussion with my hr we'll look at it look at the framework we we'll also can talk to finance okay let's arrange some one week advance for him when he he, he you know he gets the, the salary he pays back you know in our fact let me give you a, a live example uh, just uh, two days ago somebody came to me said he wants 50 ghana when he's paid you return it okay i've seen many of these so you know what i do i asked one of my colleagues to draft uh, a, a simple document that i so so, so have taken 50 ghana when i'm paid i refund it i give the money to him how many, of you, want to do same? How many of you want to do the same very soon you can do it <laughs> go i did that because i've had countless occasions that people come in you beat them in, 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 on, on, uh, on the street on the street and they've forgotten that <laughs> <laughs> they've come for <laughs> for some money from you uh -huh. so it is something i could just wave mm -hmm. you know and most managers do that they wave some of this support mm -hmm. okay but sometimes you want to teach people the right things okay else you develop an appetite for regular uh -huh. so i use our possibles when the situation is tight Okay, so um, down qua. I thought you said you had a. Uh, no, that's. Uh, are you done? I don't want to take all the time for everybody. <laughs> oh, yeah, 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 very important. So we'll be okay, so down qua ask, is asking, do HR determine an employee's salary? No. Um, there are clear parameters for determining salaries of employees. Mm. Uh, first of all, there should be a salary scale. Okay. For for that, there should be, and they will use your educational level to determine how much we pay you. Okay. We'll look at the skill set. You see, somebody sweeping. Mm -hmm. What skill set do you need to sweep? Somebody who is a program director. What skill set do you need to determine the kind of like instrument? Mm -hmm. Look at the concept. Okay. Somebody has to sit and think through. So you reward thinking mm -hmm. as against manual push. So all these factors are combined to determine why we we'll pay program director different from, let's say, a cleaner. Okay. Okay. So those parameters are there, and we use it to determine the, the pay. Okay. So I'm going to read this from Walbeck. Um, Kofi Ampedu. He said, "Good." programming thank you and extremely relevant says that what is the law on travel and risk allowance realize it's almost like a privilege in Ghanaian employment I mean that's what he is saying um, it's more like they're giving you a privilege to travel so really there's no allowance when you're traveling or anything normally when people travel mm -hmm. we have what they call per diem for okay night spent outside of your locality so if you go to kumasi and you sleep mm -hmm. for the night you'll get an allowance okay if you are traveling outside it's also good for the employer to provide what you call uh, travel insurance okay so that if the anything unexpected happens at least the person is covered but i know most companies will provide per diem mm -hmm. even when you travel to kumasi from accra or you travel outside and we, we we do it at where i work you know mm. uh, so it's 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 common uh, we might find a few enterprises that are not well cut and okay. then they will not think these things are important but for me it's important you know travel allow uh, insurance and then pay them all right so your final words to um your people your resource um The, the employee is key. 
Okay. Employee is key to every organization. Okay. So I urge my fellow colleagues in Ima Resource to always treasure mm -hmm. this resource. I also want to urge employees to think of productivity. Because what we put in is what we get. Sure. If we put in more, we are likely to get more, and there is more in the kitty to be shared. Mm -hmm. But if you come and you loiter about and you pick your bag and go home, be reminded that our targets will not be met and the possibility of salary delays or even redundancy. Because you've, you've heard the things going around in most companies that they are retrenching, asking some employees to what? Step uh, aside. Step aside because the funds are not there. Mm -hmm. So let's think about productivity. Each day before you leave, ask yourself, have I contributed to my maximum ability? If you have done that, God bless you. If not, repent for the kingdom of God is very close. <laughs> Well, a very big thank you to you for coming. I'm most grateful. Thank, thank you. you. And thank you also for being with us. I know we have exceeded our time, but hey, it was worth it because I've learned a lot. So have you. See you same time next week right here in the office. Have a good evening. <laughs>